All right, good to hear that. Um, now, today is a very interesting lecture um, in which we're going to answer the most common questions that we have about um, different people. Um, why is that um, the way that we look um, is only specific to us? And our brothers and our sisters and our cousins do not look like us. Um, they have different heights, they have different colors, um, they have different hair, um, they have different ways of walking and talking um, and what makes us so different um, and the picture that i'm showing you it's definitely not my cat um, it's a specific breed um, in turkey um, and it's called angora cat um, the reason that i'm displaying this picture um, for you is to note one thing that this cat has um, two different colored eyes uh, one is um, slightly light green another is uh, more of a bluish tint and um, that's a very specific cat um, and that only happens um, in certain area in Turkey um, where cats live in an environment where the cats naturally um, have different colored eyes um, it depends on the parents also um, but in general um, that's how it is now have you noticed that why is that that um, it's not same here in Pakistan or in other countries that cats have different um, eyed colors and if that's true then what's that one thing that actually makes it different um, the um, colors uh, from others I mean if every every cat is similar then why should um, one cat be different than others um, and then other cats why not what is the reason that actually makes people um, um, I'm sorry uh, make cats actually look um, different uh, from um, how they generally are. Now today we're going to be talking about that um, in a concept and that's called genotype and phenotype. Now what happens is that um, that there are two things um, that happen um, when we uh, when some organism is born um, be it animals or be it human beings. Um, one thing is the genetic factors. Uh, what kind of eyes did your parents have? What kind of uh, heights did they have? What was their weights? What did, what were their diseases? Um, and the genetic makeup that we actually inherit from them, that is called um, the genotype. So all the genes um, that you inherit from your mother and your father, so remember there are 23 chromosomes from each side um, and that is inherited into us. And then we have... Um, 46 uh, all together half of that from your mother and half of that from your father and this is why um, we inherit in both sides now some of those genes um, actually take over and we get um, a specific color um, for example um, let's look into some very interesting examples on um, how um, unique and how different um, things can be um, there's another example that I could show you is um this um so if you want to make a basic difference between um, a genotype or a phenotype you might want to look at um, two different sides um, on the left side you see these uh, symbols of uh, long chain like um, connections um, and these are actually um, the dna um, samples and that means that the biological genes that you inherit from your parents that is called genotype and the environment in which you live or the actual genes that become expressed um, and that decides your color your eyes your lips um, your height your weight in uh, your hair and these things are actually um, compiled into a group called phenotype so let's look at uh, in an example uh, can everyone actually see the video before I actually play that? All right, perfect. Let me know if you can actually hear the voice also.
right, so if you look in this um, first slide, so what you notice is that uh, they talk about brown eyes. That's the most common color um, of human beings' eyes. So every um, two persons, uh, one of them has brown eyes. So look, we can easily say that 50% of people um, all around the world um, have brown colors. Um, so that that's the most common one. So that actually means that, you know, um, these are the genes that will actually get displayed a lot more than the other colors. Um, now the second thing, if you notice that, that everyone has wisdom teeth, um, you know, it's, it comes from your jaw bones and you know they grow when you uh, actually become an um, adult or in late adolescence. And um, there are some people um, in those, uh, the teeth actually never erupt, uh, even when they're adults, because there's probably not enough space for them to grow or you know they remain dormant in the jaw bone for many years. Um, so that's one in seven people uh, who never actually get up their wisdom teeth out. Um, and let's talk about blue eyes now. Um, so blue eyes are something that um, is a result of a mutation um, when a um, child is born. Um, at the time of conception, uh, the results of a mutation comes out in the form of um, blue eyes. Um, and one in 40 people actually um, have this um, phenomena where and they're born with blue eyes. So it's quite a lot, uh, you know, it's quite rare uh, in comparison with the brown eyes that we have uh, said earlier about. Um, and it's the same with blonde hair. So you can see um, blonde hair is also the result of a genetic mutation. So it's more likely if both your parents are blonde, um, then that mutation will happen and then you will be a blonde. Um, and that happens um, in one out of um, 60 children. Um, so if there are 60 children born, only one of them would be a blonde. Now, um, talking about eye color, um, the rarest color is um, the green color. Um, only one in 67 people actually have uh, green colors. And it's also the result of a mutation uh, at the time of conception. Um, this is one more problem, you know, um, females actually have a lot more than uh, males, which is called freckles. Uh, some have freckles on the uh, palm of their hand or sole of their foot. Freckles are largely associated with um, redheads. So you, um, you're gonna be studying about redheads um, afterwards, but for now, um, normally freckles are on your cheeks um, and in your face area. But um, some people, they have it on their hand and their feet uh, for some reason. Um, and that's also one of the uh, genetic mutations that is causing um, this uh, abnormality where you don't get it on face, but you do get that on um, hands and feet. Um, and only one in 70 people actually have that. Um, talking about red hair, um, also that's the rarest color. And so some people naturally have um, red hair instead of normal um, black and blonde and brown um, hair. And that happens only for people, one person in every 75. Um, so that's also one of the um, reasons um, that genetics play a very strong part um, in how you're going to look like once you're born. Okay, um, how many people have actually seen uh, Lord of the Rings, the movie? All right, um, I mean, do you recognize there is a, a creature in Lord of the Rings called elves and they have long ears and you know, long hair, very sleek. Um, it goes down up to their backbone uh, and they were called elves. Now, um, these elves have um, long pointy ears and that can actually happen in human beings also, surprisingly. Um, and we call it elf ears. Um, some cases of pointed ears um, um, 
are because of trauma to your ears um, during the conception or in labor period when the mother is in labor. Um, if there's a trauma that happens to her ears, um, so these ears are more creased um, and then they become unfolded uh, with time. But then when they're when the child is born, then definitely it's uh, it looks like more like elvish ears. Um, and that happens to only one in 120 people. Um, and that one is really interesting, the next one. Um, most people have our hearts um, on the left side, um, but there's a specific um, genetic mutation that's called uh, dextrocardia. And that um, happens, when that happens, your heart is, instead of on your left side, it's on your right side. I remember there was an Indian movie also in which the guy actually got shot and you know, he survived because he was the one who had his um, heart on the right side. Um, so that's really interesting and it only happens to 132 people. Um, we were just talking about the cat um, and that's the same problem um, that can happen to human species also and that's called uh, heterochromia um, that happens uh, to people one in 66 uh, people have that um, and in most cases you know your one eye is a li little different uh, in color um, with your um, other eye. Um, the same thing with your eyelashes um, it's called and dystichiasis, uh, where your eyelashes actually have two rows instead of normal one row. So, you know, they're on top of each other. Um, and that happens to one in 180 um, people. So it's really interesting how genetic mutation can actually cause a lot of uh, apparent differences um, in us. Now, remember, um, the actual point was to differentiate between genotype and the phenotype. Um, so if you look at the differences uh, between the genotype and phenotype, you would uh, find out that um, the genes that you actually inherit from your parents, um, both the expressed ones um, and the unexpressed ones. For example, for this person, if um, his eyes are brown and black, um, and other people who had um, both black eyes, um, the um, original genes was, um, are actually the same um, from the mother and from the father. But uh, in this person, it expressed into uh, one brown eye and one black eye. And it probably his brother um, or sister, they have both black eyes. So basically what they inherited from their parents um, was the same, but how it expressed actually changed um, the phenotype. Um, so the expressed and un unexpressed genes together are called genotype and um, how they actually look like, um, the, only the expressed one um, is called the phenotype. Um, now there is um, one more thing uh, about this that um, is very interesting. I have also um, shared it on the course page, by the way, if you have not already gone to the course page, I have uh, updated the videos on the course page where, where you could actually um, see in detail um, how uh, these interactions work. Um, not all of that will be coming an exam for uh, now. It's really important that you understand the difference between two uh, so that you understand um, how our genetics actually affect our um, expression and how do we look like and why do we differentiate uh, with each other. Uh, for example, interestingly, if uh, there is someone with black hair and they marry someone um, with uh, blonde hair. Um, so their children is, are most likely not going to have the blonde hair because for one you have already studied that it's quite rare and the second the chances of black hair um, actually dominating the uh, blonde hair are quite high. Now um, now that we have studied uh, about that uh, why does it actually happen? Uh, so for that let's look into the um, dynamics of um, what makes um, these um, some genes expressed and some genes repressed. Um, here expressed means that um, what actually happened in real life. Um, so when the child is born, he has a possibility, for example, um, to have both the black or brown eyes. Um, but when he actually um, is uh, finally born, uh, he has both black eyes. So the possibility of um, having both eyes um, is part of genotype, but um, now that he is actually born with the black eyes, that's his phenotype. 
and why does it actually happen? Um, so there are uh, four basic reasons um, why actually um, these mechanisms um, are expressed um, in real life when a child is born. So one of the technique is, I mean, evolution is called a mutation. Now the simple definition of mutation is that um, a mutation could cause parents' genes uh, for bright green coloration to have offspring with a gene for brown coloration. So let me um, explain to you the example first. Um, so let's say we have um, some um, bees, um, both of green color and brown color. So you see there are two greens and one brown. Um, so they live in the same environment. Um, and now that um, they are in the um, same environment, what are the chances that you know their next generation is going to be brown or green? And a combination of different factors actually decides uh, that their what color their genes would be. So first of them is mutation. So what the mutation uh, does is that um, that uh, the parents with genes for bright green coloration to have offspring with a gene for brown coloration. So, uh, for example, if there are two uh, green um, bees, if they give birth to a brown um, bee, then it's a result of a mutation because naturally or most most likely it should have been green but it's not and this uh, defect or this process um, by which at the time of conception um, the color um, expression could not be uh, dominant is called the mutation and that would make a genes for brown coloration more frequent in the population than they were before the mutation um, so that means if in this generation um, these uh, two bees actually uh, conceptualize a brown one and in the next generation the brown one would actually uh, make more brown ones and um, then um, with time the population would start increasing now that's one of the reason now the second reason uh, for um, the growth of um, brown or green um, bees is that um, some of the uh, bees for example there are two tribes one is the brown one and one is the green one so if the brown ones actually go to the green ones um, and then they start living there and that would make genes for brown coloration more frequent in the green beetle population so that means that you know the, not only they are brown in the old tribe uh, so now that the brown has gone to the green and then they're going to make more babies then you, they're going to start having brown bees also so they're they're almost going to be two tribes very soon. So the population of brown bees are going to increase very fast. Um, there's a third technique, uh, which is called the genetic drift. Um, so imagine that one generation, um, two brown uh, happen to have four offspring survived to produce. And um, there's a human being or there's a bat or there's an other animal or rat, they came and actually crushed the green ones. Um, so now we are left with more brown ones and less green ones. So this natural uh, disaster or natural uh, uh, incident actually automatically gave the chance for the brown ones to breed a lot more than the green ones. So this is why we're going to be start seeing uh, less of green because first they are less in number. And then, you know, when they're going to be cooperating with the brown ones, we're going to have more brown ones also. And finally, uh, there's something called um, natural selection. Um, you do realize that uh, nature depends on um, a predatory uh, hierarchy. For example, um, human beings um, eat cows, cows eat grass. Uh, similarly, lions eat other animals. The other animals eat uh, smaller animals. The smaller animals eat uh, insects. So what happens is that, that um, if these two bees are actually living the green and brown in a certain environment, and then there are birds who actually um, feed themselves uh, upon insects. Um, so they go out hunting and they start eating green ones, um, and green ones uh, were not as protective, or for some reason they were um, open in unprotected area, and the birds started to eat them. Then naturally, uh, brown bees would be left a little bit more, than the green ones and this is called natural selection um, so the bees were not good at protecting themselves 
um, and their um, offspring. They're naturally going to eliminate as soon um, as um, all of them actually exhaust or they do not reproduce um, or they find a way to protect themselves. Um, and this is finally called a natural selection. So now how many um, methods of uh, changing a, of uh, speeches and do we have? Okay, and what are those? Very good, Saad. And what are the other two? Okay, one more genetic drift and Very good. Uh, so we have these four, mutation, migration, genetic rift, and natural process. Uh, now let's go back and see uh, one more uh, example of how actually uh, these four um, impact um, in different expressions of um, human genes. So here are some more examples. Uh, one is with the um, hand. Some people actually only have one line in the hand. For example, normal people have um, at least three, one on the top and one in the middle, and then one uh, perpendicular in the middle of your hand. Um, but some people only have this uh, middle line that actually separates um, your hand from the middle. And that's only one in 320 people. Um, some people have um, half colored eyes. So right now I showed you with the cat um, a complete um, one colored eye and then the other color eye. So they were two different eye colors. But some people have in only in one eye half hemisphere is actually brown and half hemisphere is black. Um, that's called Wardenberg syndrome. And that happens to one in 410 people. Um, same with the extra rib arises from the seventh uh, cervic cervical vertebra. Uh, so what happened is that uh, normally uh, the have this rib cage um, in which we have certain number of ribs, uh, but sometimes it happens that there is a presence of congenital abnormality located above the normal first rib. Um, so you could easily call it um, the extra rib. Uh, and by the way, we have to restart the meeting in some time because um, the 40 minutes are about to end. Um, so just keep that in mind. Now, um, extra limbs. Sometimes you have noticed that you know some people have an extra thumb um, on their hand, um, and you know that's a very small one protrusion on your uh, in the middle of your uh, thumb, and that's also a very rare genetic mutation. Um, it happens to only one in. Uh, 505 people. Um, now a good question for everyone of you is that for example if we uh, talk about the extra limbs uh, out of all these four uh, 
possible ways in which uh, the genetics uh, can take a different expression which uh, one might have happened for you to have extra limbs so why do people actually get an extra limb i mean what process do you think uh, would mostly affect that Uh, well, Saad, it's a good guess, but um, if you look at the picture, natural selection is when uh, um, environmental reason actually affects um, your current state. For example, um, in back to the example of bees, um, there's a bird um, who keeps eating the green bees, so that's why we have um, more brown bees left. Um, but if you have an extra thumb, um, how do you explain um, that it's because of natural selection? Um, a good answer, um, Aisha, but then genetic drift is something um, that happens through an accident. But when you're born, um, that's not a possibility that you already have an accident before you're born. Um, so it has to be uh, the uh, mutation. Um, so Mukadda said the right answer. Um, so what happens is that um, when you're um, about the time of labor uh, conceptualization, um, there, there, the gene process, it does not copy uh, exactly um, in the fetus. And this is why um, some of the limbs, uh, either they form abnormally or you have an extra limb for that. Um, so the reason why it happened was that it's uh, because of uh, mutation that people have uh, these kind of abnormalities, um, even though their parents might not have that at all. Um, so there's a one more um, wonderful lesson that we can actually um, learn from that, which is that there are so many things um, that depends on um, these mutations, um, not only uh, how you physically look, but also how you psycho psychologically um, behave um, in um, society or if you are more prone to uh, one kind of disease than others. Uh, for example, if I were to um, show you because this is a psychology course uh, and psychology and biology has very uh, strong relation with each other. Um, and we studied about the um, biology um, last time in our lecture when we studied about neurotransmitters um, and motor and sensory systems um, and different hormones and how they actually affect us. So many diseases can actually, uh, we naturally become um, a target for uh, some diseases that our parents might have. Uh, so first of all, let's understand what's a genogram. So there's something called genogram. Um, so you understand uh, what's a diagram. So diagram is actually a picture. Uh, and gene, a geno comes from the genes. So two words, diagram and um, genetics, if you put them together. So we have something called um, genogram. So what example is that, uh, for example, if my grandmother had diabetes, um, that's another name for sugar, if some people don't know that, and my grandfather had heart disease, um, and, uh, and that's on the male side. For example, this box, that's uh, male. So let me actually annotate that so that you would understand. And this circle is, denotes female. So uh, this scare is male and this circle is female. And let's say my maternal grandmother had diabetes and my maternal grandfather uh, um, had heart disease. So together with that, uh, my from my paternal side, uh, I have my uncle, I have my aunt, and then uh, it's my father. And from my mother's side, um, me and my sister are the only one. And, and that just that's for that's just for an example. Now, from my father and my mother, um, they keep carrying on um, the potential for these diseases. 
and diabetes from my mother's side and heart disease from my father's side. So the likelihood that uh, that me or my sister would actually um, have one of those is very high because that runs in the blood. So it's not only the color and height and shape and weight um, and um, physical features that translate into your genes, but it also the um, psychological uh, facts, um, how you behave, um, your attitude, your way of thinking about things, um, that also actually translates. Uh... All right, so I was talking about um, the potential of actually having um, the um, physical and both um, psychological um, disorders um, through the genes. Um, so I'll show you another uh, real life picture um, for a celebrity called um, Frida Kahlo. Um, she was a wonderful uh, painter um, and some of her paintings are actually here in fine art departments also. So if you ever happen to go to fine art department, you know, they have some, some of her pictures hanging there. Now, um, let me make it a little bit bigger. All right. Um, so what happened is that um, that's a very famous painter called uh, Frida Kahlo. And let's look at her family history. Um, so her grandparents were from, uh, her grandfather was um, a German um, who owned a jewelry store and photography equipment shop. And then um, her mother was a Hungarian Jewish uh, person who actually immigrated to Germany. And then they married and they immigrated to Mexico in 1892. Um, and the photographer, her father, um, he died of seizures uh, from um, falling from a high surface um, at 18 years of old age. Um, so what happened is that her mother was left alone. And uh, now the most important thing uh, for you guys to actually um, remember here is that how he died. So he died of seizures. Seizures is also like um, when you have epilepsy uh, and when your bar body starts uh, mm -hmm. shaking um, and things like that. These are um, you know, what we call um, seizures. Now, what happened is that um, on the other side of our uh, family, um, her uh, maternal side, um, this is a Mexican photographer, I was his um, grandfather, and then a Spanish Indian uh, was um, her mother. And then they also uh, died of seizures uh, from midlife crisis. And they also, uh, the other one, uh, the male one, you remember, the scariest for male and the boxes uh, for female. And the male one actually committed um, suicide in front of the uh, fiance. Um, so what happened is that uh, when both of them gave birth to Frida Kahlo and her, she lived from 1907 to 1954, um, she had polio as a child um, and, and she had uh, a terrible bus accident at 18. So remember this potential of actually carrying um, all these uh, diseases. Think of our bodies as a very uh, sophisticated computer um, that actually keeps record of all the genetic makeup that we are having uh, from our um, ancestral line. Um, so generally tall people have tall offsprings if they keep marrying with each other. Uh, generally people um, who are white, for example, if uh, two white people um, get married, the children are more likely to be white. Um, and if one of African Americans actually uh, marries someone who's Caucasian, white um, American, then their children are going to be uh, uh, 
a lighter color. Uh, for example, Jennifer Lopez, um, she she had different parents, uh, a white one and um, an African American. So this is how um, these genes actually um, show up um, in your uh, not only your physical um, appearance but also in your psychological makeup. Uh, so, for example, if there's a uh, there's someone in your family who actually had uh, schizophrenia, the chances of you, and especially the blood fam um, relations, then it's very likely that you might uh, get that also. So it's very important for you to actually have um, some measures against that, and especially if you have the symptoms uh, for that. So what you do is that um, as soon as the symptoms um, start appearing, you start um, you go to a psychiatrist to find uh, that you know if th there is a possibility that there are some um, genes that are causing that and if that's true that you know you might start taking medication or do something that can actually be helpful in early ages um, that's the same case with bipolar and um, borderline disease also um, that you if you have the um, symptoms and if that's in your genes you're more likely to actually have that um, so you have to you know, take and care of the fact that you know, that's something that you might be uh, worried about now there's one more thing uh, that you have to do is that um, I will be giving you two assignments. Uh, one is to um, actually make a genogram of your own family. That means that um, you have to, uh, you know, go and uh, it could be a very fun exercise. Um, so you could go and ask your parents, both your mother's side and your father's side, if there is. Uh, um, there's certain um, heart disease uh, factor if, there, if there's anyone who actually had the heart disease or not it's the same with diabetes you know, or psychological disorders and things like that okay don't worry you don't have to ask the whole family you just have to ask your parents um, so you just on a paper just make a genogram and see what are the uh, disorders that uh, you are more um, you're susceptible to um, or at least you know what's the uh, family history of um, the uh, physical and mental